Hi, I'm Lily. Today I'm going to show you how I made the miniature kitchen set that I've used in my last stop motion animation. If you haven't seen the animation called Love As Many Colors, I'm going to put the link above and in the description below. First, I'm going to show you how I made the main structure with plywood, then how I made all the little cabinets for the kitchen, the sink and the tub, then how I made the dining table and the chairs, and finally how I made the little curtains. Enjoy this video! To make the base of my set, I've used a piece of 18mm plywood. The board I had available wasn't wide enough, so I've added another bit of timber and used a connecting plate to join the two pieces together. I've added some studs underneath the plywood piece and used a drill. Then use a countersink drill bit to make sure the screws will sit flush and then I screw it together. For the walls I've used a 9mm plywood sheet that I've cut to size. I've cut out the window as well. Then I took my base, lined up the walls against it, drill and screw it together. I keep doing it until I have all my walls connected to my base. When you come to the kitchen layout, I took some time to make a sketch to scale, not just a floor plan, but actually every wall to make sure that I have designed correctly each component. I know exactly what goes where. It will make the rest of the work much easier. Then I start building up some volume with some cardboard and the hot glue gun. I've added the skirting made with a piece of card. And for the cabinet, I've used a 5mm craft foam. I've added side panel with a bit of basa wood. Then I've cut some doors for the cupboard that I've glued in place. For the wall cabinet, I build up some volume with some cardboard and the hot glue gun first and then glue it against the plywood. Then I cover all the edges with some cards. Added a piece of basa wood at the front that I've already scored to separate each cabinet. Then added some doors with some basa wood. And there you go, I have the base of my kitchen done. Then I've added some frame inside and outside every window opening. And primed the whole thing, including the cabinets, with a white gesso. Then I've painted with two coats of acrylic paints. For the worktop, I've used some basa wood that I cut to size. Cut out the sink opening. First I cut it out with an exacto blade, then use a drill bit to help opening it further, and then I send it down. Then I've placed my worktop on top of blocks of basa wood and I use a piece of warbler. It's a magical thermoplastic that you can shape into anything you want. I warm it up with a heat gun and then place onto my shape and press it gently with my finger. As long as it's warm, it will take the shape you want. And once it's cold, it will hold this shape. Then once it's cold, you can take it out and trim it with a scissor. Then I started painting the worktop, initially with some diluted brown paints. Then I've primed the sink with some white gesso. Then I went back to my worktop, decided actually I wanted them to be grey, so I've painted with an acrylic paint. I've also added two layers of acrylic on the cabinets with a lighter colour for the top cabinet. So when it comes to the tiles used for the floor and the splashback, I made a template with some paper that I cut the size. For the floor, I took a big piece of EVA foam, 5mm thick, and cut it to the exact shape needed. 
I've also used the EVA form to copy the paper template to create the splashback with the same material. I put the form and the template aside and we'll go back to the tiling later on. So now coming back to my worktop, I hot glue it in place and also hot glue the sink. I've added a piece of black warbler to create a hob. For the handles, I've used some flat wire that I shape with a little plier. I've super glued it in place. Then I realized I should have painted black while it's supposed to be the oven in front of the hub. For the extractor fan, I've used a bit of basil wood that I cut to the shape I needed. Sand it down. And then use a piece of warbler that I warm up and shape around my basil wood. I cut the excess and then once it was cold, I took it out of the basil wood. I've added a bit of aluminium paint to it. I've also glued some foam at the back so I've got something to attach it to the wall. Now I'm going to talk about the tap. I've used some plastic tubes of different uh, width. I think I had them from a jewelry store. I cut them to size, insert a piece of steel wire, which is stronger than aluminium wire, so I can shape it however I want and it will keep its shape. I made sure I had some extra wires coming out of the top. I use a block of wood so I can insert the extra wire into it. That will hold it in place while I apply some white gesso to prime it and then I could it paint. Once it was completely dry, I super glue it to the sink. I've also added a little bit of PVO sand relief just to finish off each handle. So now I'm going to talk about the dining table and the chairs. I took a piece of basil wood, 5mm thick, and used a roll of tape to mark the outline of my table. Cut it to size with a little Japanese sew. Send it down. And then I mark up underneath some lines so I know exactly where to place my legs. I used a hot glue gun to make sure the legs were secured to the table. Added some bits in between the legs to make sure that it will hold everything together. And there you go, a little table. For the chair, I follow the same principles. I've created all my pieces first send them down, make sure they fit nicely with each other and they are the right scale. Then I've used some super glue to hold them together. I've also added some hot glue underneath, first of all because nobody will see it anyway, but it reinforced the whole structure and helped keep the legs together. Then I keep added some super glue to build up the chair. Then I prime the whole thing with white gesso, paint it, seal it, age it, and finally varnish it. I'm going to talk about the little curtains. I took a piece of fabric and cut it into four rectangles of the same size. Took two pieces and sew them together along three edges. Leave one open so you can turn it inside out. Then I took an aluminium wire mesh, which is fantastic because that means I can sculpt the fabric once it's in it. Once it was completely in, I can fold the top part, pass it through the sewing machine to close it. And then start to sculpt my fabric. As you can see, it's really cute and it really keeps the exact fold I needed. Then I made a hole at the top of the curtain that is the right size than the little timber button I've used as a pole.
for the wall I've used the tiniest drill bit I can find and drill some holes above the window. Then place some wire and bend it upwards. Pass the wire through the curtains, in between the curtains and the pole. Cut the excess of the wire and bend it inwards. For the windows, I've used some polypropylene sheets and some self-adhesive film. I've cut the film to size and cut the frame out. Then I press the white film against the polypropylene sheets. And finally, place it inside the opening and use some clear tape to hold it in place. Now I'm going to talk about the tiling. I used a sheet of EVA foam that I showed earlier. I cut it to the exact size needed for the flooring of the whole kitchen and I marked it with a permanent marker. It's worth taking the time to decide the exact size of the tiles you want and the way they are laid out. I did the same for the tile of the splashback. Then I've used a wood burning tool to carve the foam. I've done this outside with gloves and mask. I did the same with the splashback. Then I prime it with some plastic dip. This can was at the end of his life. Apply two coats of acrylic paints. Use a sponge to add lots of different colors to it. Seal it with a clear matte sealer. Apply a contrasting colors to create the grout. Make sure it's well diluted and remove the excess with a wet paper towel straight away. Dry brush with some white for the highlights. And finally seal it with a clear matte sealer. Then to glue the tires, I've applied some contact cement or contact adhesive on the plywood and on the foam. And you need to leave it set for approximately 10 minutes until it stops being tacky. So in the meantime, I've hot glued the splash back in place. It was a bit of a fight, but it ended up going where I wanted to go. So when it comes to gluing the floor, I made a huge mistake because you need to make absolutely sure you're perfectly aligned before you even press the foam against the plywood because once it's bond, it will bond strongly. And this one, as you can see, it was not exactly at the right spot. And as I tried to pull it out, it started to tear. It was just, it was a mess. So basically I had to fight with it. By the time I took it out, there was some tear into it. I finally managed to put it back where I wanted to go. But as you can see, there was some tear, there was some filling, but at that point I had two options. Or you can start from scratch or you can just fill the gaps. So I went for the second options. I've used a pebble sand relief to fill the gaps. It's not supposed to be a filler, but that's how I use it. And to be able to fill the gaps, I had to apply a few coats of it. While that was drying, I've glued some skirting, made a bit of timber and some paint that is perfect to hide the edges. Overall, the floor wasn't too great, but it wasn't catastrophic either. And I knew by the way I was framing the film, it wouldn't actually appear on the shots. But then I decided I didn't like the colors, so I ended up repainting the floor, repainting the wall as well, so they are brighter and warmer. I've even added a lot of little frames, simply done with some sheets of basil wood. And I cut the size, paint it, and then I use some of your pictures, move them around until I had a nice layout that I like, and press them in place with some white tack, which is probably the best way to go about it, because if you're not happy with their position, you can easily take them out and move them around. And there you go, you have a kitchen. Thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Next time I'm going to show you some behind the scenes of my stop motion animation Love as Many Color. Until then, take care.